Can you beat Pokemon Scarlet with just one Flamigo? Let me tell you about the inspiration behind attempting this challenge. In the middle of my Terra only hardcore Nuzlocke, one of my friends in chat suggested something. A 500 base stats challenge. Basically what this means is that you are only allowed to catch and use Pokemon with 500 base stats or lower, while following the regular hardcore Nuzlocke rules of course. And as soon as I saw that, I thought to myself, eh, that seems kind of easy, for this game at least. So how do I make that harder? Oh yeah, use only one Pokemon with 500 base stats or lower. And what Pokemon did I choose? Flamigo. Here's why. First, although Flamigo's total base stats were only 500, it specialized in attack and speed, which meant it had potential to become a sweeper. Second, it had a really good typing. Flying and fighting type moves deal with a lot of Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. And not only that, we can take advantage of the Terra mechanic and change its Terra type for even more coverage. And finally, third, its ability was nuts. Scrappy, which states that the Pokemon can hit ghost type Pokemon with normal type and fighting type moves. It is also unaffected by Intimidate. I mean, that's just insane. Not only does this ability cover our weakness against ghost type Pokemon, but we also never have to worry about Intimidate. So now that we picked our Pokemon for this challenge, let's go over the rules again real quick before we get started. No items during battle, no overleveling past the next gym, and I can only use one Flamigo the whole game. Cool? All right, let's get it going. First things first, I like to start my challenge runs as soon as you unlock your mount. The reason why is because before the mount, you just don't have much control over your Pokemon yet. It's just a bunch of dialogue and battles that you're meant to win anyway. So let's just skip through this hour long tutorial, shall we? Okay, first order of business, catching a Flamigo. The earliest you can catch a Flamigo is at a small body of water in South Province Area 1, east of the Poco Path Lighthouse. It's level 6, easy to catch, and has Flying Terra. Oh, and we also named it Bubblegum. Shout out to my boy Karwu. Step 1, done. Step 2, prep the Flamigo. The first thing I want to change about this Flamigo is its moveset. Yeah, over time it'll learn some pretty decent flying and fighting type moves, but we wanted to teach it the OP stuff now. And luckily, because Scarlet and Violet is an open world game, we are able to achieve this pretty easily. We pick up Low Kick in South Province Area 2, Acrobatics in East Province Area 3, and Source Dance in West Province Area 1. With these three moves this early in the game, our Flamigo was a force to be reckoned with. Next step was to EV train Flamigo in the attack and speed stats to optimize its role as a physical sweeper. We bought the Power Bracer at the Deli Bird Shop in Mesa Gosa, went to the cave near Poco Path Lighthouse where we saved Coridon, and proceeded to defeat a bunch of young gooses for attack EVs. Then went back to the Deli Bird Shop to purchase the Power Anklet, returned to the cave, and defeated a bunch of Dugtrio this time for speed EVs. Boom, we now have a fully EV trained Flamigo. The last thing to do was defeat it in Adamant Mint, which you can actually find on your way to the first badge. And now Bubblegum was officially ready to start kicking some ass. But first, we gotta make some bad jokes. The first badge is the Bug Gym in Cortondo against Katie. I'd love to give you guys a great storyline for this battle, but this fight lasted just as long as the UFC's Ben Askren versus Jorge Masvidal fight. The fight clock is brought to you by Maldon. Oh! 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 It was over so fast. And why was it so easy? Acrobatics. This move is so good early game. It does double damage if the user isn't holding an item, which doesn't really matter until the Elite Four anyway. So a 110 base damage move, plus stab, plus Terra, plus super effective? Yeah. Katie stood absolutely no chance, and we easily obtained our first badge. Next up was the Stony Cliff Titan Cloth. The fight starts, Bubblegum uses low kick, and Cloth dies? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Even I was surprised at that one. I mean, normally these Titan Pokemon are supposed to be much tankier than their originals. So why was I able to one shot the cloth so easily while still following the level cap rule? Let me explain. Low kicks damage depends on how much the opposing Pokemon weighs. And because all Titan Pokemon are huge, low kicks damage against these Titans equal to that of a close combat. And with that, we now have two moves that have the ability to be more than 100 base damage this early in the game. OP. Anyway, in the second phase, Instead of using low kick again, I opened the fight with Source Dance because it had now been buffed via Urban Mystica and I didn't want to trigger its ability Anger Shell, which basically makes it a lot stronger. Next turn, Bubblegum takes out the cloth with another huge low kick, obtaining our second badge from the Titan. 
Up next was the Grass Gym and Artisan led by Brassius. None too crazy here. Bubblegum treated these grass Pokemon just like the bug Pokemon in the first gym, easily obtaining our third badge. Afterwards, we head to the open Sky Titan. Brum -brum -brum. This fight was kind of scary because our Famigo was weak to flying type moves. Yeah, sure, Bubblegum was doing its job as a physical sweeper so far, but it still had a huge weakness. It was very squishy. Bubblegum was basically a glass cannon, and honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Despite the possibility of being defeated by this big ass bird, I charge into battle with full force. And would you look at that? Not only did Bubblegum not die, but he one shot both phases of the Titan fight with a Terra boosted acrobatics, attaining our fourth badge from Arwen. Later on in our journey, we would end up at Team Dark, led by DJ Giacomo. For this battle, I had to break the rules just for a bit because you actually can't access these Team Star bases unless you have three Pokemon. So I cut a nearby fan fee and used our starter, Speaker Tito, alongside Bubblegum to be able to enter Team Dark. This part is normally where my challenge runs start to get a little bit more difficult. And this was due to the monster truck waiting for us at the finish line. Luckily, Dark type Pokemon were weak to fighting types. And since these Starmobiles are just as heavy as Titans, Low Kick does great work here and we quickly collect our fifth badge from Giacomo. After defeating Team Dark, the next destination is the Electric Gym in Levincia, led by Iono. Looking at her team, there were actually a lot of problems that we might run into compared to the previous badges thus far. The obvious one was that Bubblegum was weak to electric type moves, and if we do end up getting hit by a Spark, which every Pokemon on the team had, there was a possibility that Famigo would get paralyzed. Two, Iono's lead Pokemon was a Watchroll, a flying and electric type Pokemon, which literally counters our Flamigo. So any significant damage that we would try to deal to this Watcher will be ineffective. Three, Belly Bolt Electromorphosis. Flamigo definitely could not handle an electric move from this chubby buddy. And finally, the Electric Terramus Magius has Confuse Ray. So as you can see, this fight can go left fast. And I had to think of a strategy to eliminate as many bad outcomes as possible. Here's what ends up happening. The fight starts and I open up by terrestrializing Bubblegum into flying to remove the fighting type from it, just in case Watcher decides to use a flying type move. After terrestrializing, I have Flamigo use, use Source Dance. Iona's Watcher uses Pluck, just like I predicted, doing little to no damage. This allowed Bubblegum to get off another Source Dance. Watcher then used Spark and luckily we dodged the Paralyze. And now we have a plus four Flamigo. You know what they say, the best defense is a strong offense. We take out the Watcher with a Terra Boosted Acrobatics, deal with Belly Bolt with a super strong low kick, and follow it up with a double kick against Luxio, and finally defeat Iono by one-shotting her Miss Magius, earning us our sixth badge. The next three badges can be summed up pretty quickly as they were fairly easy. Bubblegum sweeps Team Fire with a few Terra Boosted Acrobatics, puts Earthworm Jimmy back into the ground with super effective low kicks, and continue to dance all over Kofu's water Pokemon. And there we go. Nine badges just like that. Things are going pretty smooth. However, we quickly ran into trouble with Team Poison. My strategy going into this battle was pretty simple. Stores dance once or twice against their lead Pokemon and then proceed to wreck shop with acrobatics. That is not what happened. I opened the fight with the Source Dance, and then the Skun Tank immediately uses Toxic, poisoning Bubblegum. Knowing I was now on a timer for the rest of the battle, I tried to get rid of Atticus's team as fast as possible, but eventually falls short because of too much poison damage. So, to solve this problem, I give Bubblegum a Pekka Berry, which removes poison as soon as it happens. I go on with the Source Dance strategy in the next attempt, but something was wrong. The Skun Tank wasn't using Toxic! Yeah, sure, we were able to get off three Source Dances, making Flamigo plus six, but we were still holding on to the Pekka Berry, which meant Acrobatics was doing half damage and normal, so I failed this attempt too. Slightly tilted, I tried again immediately, and after a couple Source Dances, Skun Tank finally decides to use Toxic. I'm not entirely sure what made Skun Tank poison us this time, so I just blamed it on RNG. Anyway, with a plus four Flamigo, the rest of the fight went as expected, and we got our 10th badge from Team Poison. Up next was the normal type gym in Medali City against Larry. I was very confident going into this battle because Bubblegum was a fighting type after all. So I take out the Kamala with a double kick, but then get paralyzed by the Dunsparce. This allowed this snake to outspeed Bubblegum and hit us with a huge hyper drill, its signature move. Staraptor was then able to finish us off with an aerial ace. So I have clearly underestimated this fight and had to change my strategy. Instead of insta-killing the Kamala, I pop a couple of swords dance, knowing that it would use Yawn on me. I figure I would just wait out the yawn and then start doing damage with a plus four flamigo. Now I know what you're thinking, why not just use a sleeping berry? Yeah, I didn't have one. <laughs> I was being very lazy and picking up items throughout the run. Anyway, after Bubblegum falls asleep, Kamala hits him with a slam, doing a lot more damage than I thought. What happens next is kind of insane. 
my flamingo proceeds to not wake up for three turns while the kamala only hits one out of the three following slams normally pokemon wake up on the third turn after sleeping and slam has an accuracy of 75 percent so it's like we got unlucky but slightly more lucky at the same time anyway with a plus four bubble gum in the red it goes on to sweep the rest of larry's team getting our 11th badge as the challenge run goes on I noticed that it's actually starting to get a little difficult and I gotta start coming up with game plans for each battle which brings us to the next gym I'd say this next fight was probably the hardest one in the whole challenge you wanna know why? double battles the ghost gym in Monta Nevera led by Ryan only did double battles so you can imagine how difficult it would be because we were only using one Pokemon. On top of the double battle format to worry about, Rhyme had a Mimikyu with Disguise, which basically meant we had to hit it at least twice to get rid of it, while at the same time dealing with their other Pokemon on the field. I chose to use my extremely low level starter as a second Pokemon just to fill the spot. The battle starts and Sprigatito dies immediately to his Shadow Sneak. No surprise there. I, I decided to attack the Pokemon that wasn't Mimikyu because I figured I would just deal with Disguise later. However, Mimikyu landed a couple of slash crits and eventually took out Bubblegum with a Shadow Sneak, which was a priority move, by the way. Then, I tried targeting the Mimikyu first, but the Banet, Rhyme's other lead Pokemon, had a move called Icy Wind, which was not only super effective against Flamigo, but it also lowered its speed. So, which one do I do with first? I ended up choosing to stick with the original strat, saving Mimikyu for last and hoping I wouldn't get hit with slash crits. And after about seven tries, <laughs> we finally got the result that we wanted receiving our 12th badge from Rhyme. The rest of the badges were pretty easy to get, so instead of giving you guys a play-by-play, -play, I'll just give y'all a quick live comp of these next six badges. Enjoy! Fire, water, and steel. Wait, what, what was it? Nice job. to be honest but i'm gonna go in the offensive here nice we got it cool let's go all 18 game badges one pokemon one flamigo all that's left is, is the elite four and the other end game fights let's fucking go dude thanks coda i couldn't have said it better myself but wait there was still one more very important thing we had to do before trying to beat the game so far we've been able to get by with pretty much just using acrobatics, which is cool and all, but I had a feeling that it wasn't gonna fly anymore. Get it? Because it's a flying move, and Flamigo was a flying Pokemon. Anyway, um, it was about time to change Bubblegum's terror type. What terror type did I choose? Well, let's discuss it. I could change it into fighting, but I didn't think that was going to accomplish much. I needed options, and we needed as much coverage as possible going into these endgame battles. So changing the Terra type to a third typing was probably our best course of action. The most obvious answer was ground, because you eliminate half your weaknesses and cover even more types of Pokemon. But there weren't that many Pokemon that were weak to ground in the remaining fights, and it was also kind of boring. However, there was a type that pretty much was super effective against more than half of the remaining Pokemon. What type was that? Ice, ice, baby. That's right, Ice Terra. In the video previous to this one, which was my Terra only hardcore Nuzlocke, I had a Weavile that pretty much carried the end of the game using Ice Punch. So going Ice was definitely the play here. To change the Terra type of my Flamigo from flying to Ice, I had to farm three and four star Ice Terra raids. Luckily, Ice was weak to fighting type moves and actually didn't take as long or be as difficult as I thought it was going to be. In just a couple of hours, I was able to gather 50 Ice Terra Shards, which is the amount you need to change a Pokemon's Terra. After doing so, here was the move set we decided to use for the rest of the game. Brave Bird, Close Combat, Terra Blast, Swords Dance, and just in case, Double Kick, for certain circumstances that you're going to find out. Beautiful! The damage, the coverage, the setup, I wouldn't have it any other way. Lastly, I gave Bubblegum a muscle band to hold for even more damage. And now, it was time to see if it was possible to beat Pokemon Scarlet with just one Flamigo without using items during battle and following a level cap rule. The first battle in the Elite Four is against Rika, the ground type user. At this point in the game, everything does damage. So in order for Bubblegum to win these fights, it would have to sweep and only take damage from the opponent's lead Pokemon. To beat Rika, we had to set up at least two source dances. The fight starts and we take out Wiz Cash and Camera with Terra Blast easily. The main issue here was Donphan, because it had Sturdy. Luckily, Flamigo had a move to play around this ability. 
Double kick. We proceed to finish off the rest of Rika's Pokemon with super effective Ice Blast. The next battle is against Poppy, the Steel type user. With one Storus Dance active on our Flamigo, we take out the Copper Draw with a close combat. Poppy's next Pokemon, Magnazone, had Sturdy. Knowing this, I kept Double Kick in Bubblegum's moveset and it deals with it quite nicely. The rest of her Pokemon have absolutely no chance against Flamigo's hands. Er, feet. The next two fights in the Elite Four weren't anything special. It was just Bubblegum using Storus Dance and Ice Terra Blasts. Here, let me show you. Okay. Alright, we, we Storus Dance. Okay, two down, but BOOM! GG cap. That's one. That's fast. I feel like Dragon Ball is the fast one. Bang! And there we go. We beat the Elite Four, baby. Up next was La Primera, Champion Gita. Bubblegum had everything it needed to beat her. We just needed to execute the game plan. Once the battle starts, we do what we always do. Terrestrialize into ice and use Source Dance. Espatra hits us with Illumina Crash and we take it out with a Terra Blast. After Espatra was King Gambit, a Dark Steel type Samurai Pokemon that was four times weak to fighting type moves. So naturally I had Bubblegum use Close Combat to remove it from the battlefield. Following King Gambit was Avalug who also dies to a Close Combat, despite having an incredibly high defense stat. Up next was Go-Goat who gets frozen to death by a super effective Ice Terra Blast and Gita's fifth Pokemon was a Veluza. Close Combat and Terra Blast were ineffective against this Mon, so we had had to use Brave Bird to take it out, leaving Bubblegum in the red, which was quite scary. The last Pokemon in this battle was a Rock Terra Glamora. We have Bubblegum use Close Combat, killing the Glamora, and with that we have defeated Champion Gita. Up next was our boy Arwen and his best bud Mabastiff. I opened the fight with Swords Dance. God, I feel like I've said that so many times in this video. That's true though! <laughs> Bubblegum then uses a close combat to take out the Greedent, Skull Villain, and Garganackle. Arwen sends out Toad School, who immediately dies to a Terra Blast. And then we finish the fight against Arwen's last two Pokemon, Cloyster and Mabostiff, with a close combat. This ends the Path of Legends quest line. The next battle was against Professor Clavel's old ass. His team had a few problems for us to worry about. His lead Pokemon, Oranguru, knew Yawn and Reflect. Two moves that would stop our Flamigo from sweeping. Also, he had an Obama Snow with Aurora Veil, which would make the fight just hard to win in general, let alone sweeping. Luckily, we had a simple strategy to negate all these bad outcomes. Lumberry. Oranguru always uses Yawn first, so we used the Lumberry to prevent Bubblegum from going to sleep, allowing us to get off a Source Dance. After that, the fight was easy. Oranguru dies to a close combat, Gyarados to a Brave Bird, Obama Snow to a close combat, Poltegeist to a close combat, Amoongus to a Terra Blast, and Skeletors to a close combat. After beating Clavel, we head to the schoolyard in Naranja Academy to fight against Penny. This battle was fairly simple as well, but I like the theme song, so I'll play some of the live stream. Okay, Source Dance up. Fuck it up, Bubblegum! Come on. That's it. We're not gonna think too hard. Bing. He didn't. <laughs> and just like that, the Starfall Street quest line was complete. Here are some sound effects for the last fight against our rival Nimona. Edge. Stone Edge is, Stone Edge is scary. The crits were kind of fucked. The gods are shining upon us. They want us to win. <clears throat> Boom! Victory Road quest line done. All right, one more fight. Unfortunately, this one was not going to be as easy as the others. In fact, it was quite difficult. First things first, just like my dad taught me before he left 20 years ago, I open the fight with Swords Dance. The opposing Slitherwing then uses Low Sweep, doing massive damage to Bubblegum and lowering its speed. So basically this attempt was already over. I tried a new strategy where I just get rid of Slitherwing as fast as possible and then set up a Swords Dance against the next Pokemon. Sadly, the next Pokemon was a Screamtail and it made quick work of our Flamigo. The next attempt, I used Swords Dance to start the battle again, but this time I didn't Terrastalize making Slitherwing's moves ineffective. However, it used Lunge and Low Sweep, lowering my attack and my speed, which resulted in Bubblegum getting taken out by a Power Gem from Fluttermane because it was faster. 
Next try, I put a clear amulet on Bubblegum to counter the stat debuffs from Slitherwing, but our Flamigo is still slower than the Fluttermane. Fluttermane has an insanely high special attack stat and speed stat, and we were not going to win this fight unless Bubblegum magically becomes faster. We've already EV trained it in speed, so that wasn't the solution. We can't use a choice scarf because that would lock us into one move. After that, I started googling possible solutions. I even asked chat for help, but nothing came to mind. Could this not be done? Can we actually not do it? Am I a... Failure? And then... It dawned on me. There was one way that we can make Bubblegum faster. Possibly even faster than the Fluttermane. Mints. The current mint I had on Bubblegum was an Adamant Mint, which raises attack, but lowers special attack. Which is pretty good. Honestly, this was the optimal mint to use for 99% of this run, as Flamigo naturally outspeeds every Pokemon so far anyway. But, for this battle in particular, we had to change it up. So I informed Professor X that I'm going to leave Cerebro for a bit, fly to Mesa Goza, go to the Chansey shop, purchase a Jolly Mint, and feed it to Bubblegum. A little fast forward to get back, and here we are. Let's see if we've made the necessary changes to beat the final battle in this challenge run. One last time, just for the lulls, I open the fight with Swords Dance. Slitherwing uses Low Sweep, and I use another Swords Dance, making Bubblegum plus 4. Slitherwing then uses another Low Sweep, and now Bubblegum was down to half HP, so it was time to attack. We take out the Slitherwing with a Terra Blast, and now is the moment of truth. Is Bubblegum faster than Sada's Fluttermane? Or did I just spend a week on this challenge only to be devastated at the end? Maybe it's time we hung it up. You know what, I could use a vacation. I heard Hawaii was kinda nice. Oh wait, I'd just be going there alone anyway. All alone, by myself. So yeah, Bubblegum is faster and Fluttermane goes down to a Terra Blast. <laughs> Terra Blast again to get rid of Sandy Shocks. Brave Birds to Screamtail to send it flying. Terra Blast to Brew Bonnet because it was looking at us funny. And finally destroy the Roaring Moon with a close combat. And there we go, y'all. We did it. We beat Pokemon Scarlet with only using one Flamigo. I popped off, chat popped off, and it was awesome. And that's the end of the video. All of the gameplay here was streamed on my Twitch channel. So if you want to see these runs live as they happen or me watching some MasterChef, go ahead and drop a follow over there. And hey, if you enjoy watching the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit the bell. Because all of those things help with the algorithm and gets this video out there in the YouTube-verse. I would greatly appreciate it. I love playing Pokemon, I love playing games, and I love doing these challenges. Thank you all so much for watching, and I look very much forward to showing y'all the challenge that I have in store next. Peace out.